Hey everybody, welcome back to the SOLIDWORKS electrical implementation video series. This video, we're going to talk about our manufacturer parts manager. And we notice on the left hand side here, again, I have those same classifications that we've seen in the symbols manager as well as the 2D footprints manager. And in this case here, I have my connectors tab already selected. If I want to search through my parts, I can select the auto refresh or just simply select search. If auto refresh is on, every single time I add or change something inside of my filters while searching, it's going to automatically refresh. And if I have thousands of parts, it's going to refresh between every single character check. So I personally like to leave mine off and then simply select search when I'm done. That way I can find the parts correctly. Inside of every single part, there is a lot of information, a lot of information that I can capture and collect about that particular part. And if needed, there are actually custom fields. We won't get into that right now. So if I want to create a new part, I have the ability to create one individual part, but I also have the ability to create an electrical assembly, which we'll get into in a few minutes. So if I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new part, I can simply select new part and start typing away because there's again there's a lot of information in here as necessary now there's only two pieces of information that are absolutely required when creating a new part and that is reference and manufacturer for reference i absolutely 100 percent recommend you utilize the manufacturer's part number if you have your own internal part number use a different field such as article number or external id to capture that particular information. In most cases, article number will work best. And then type in the manufacturer. Now remember, this is SQL based. So if there's any character changes between you and when you're entering your parts, it's going to count them as two different manufacturers. What I mean by that is, let's say I'm going to work with Alan Bradley, and I add this particular part. Save it off. It, it gets added to my database. All well and good. Well, the next time I add a part, I add Alan Bradley, and I don't have a space between the two. Well, that just created a brand, another, another manufacturer in my library, or maybe another instance where I went Alan Tech Bradley. So now in this case here, I would have three different references to Alan Bradley. So I'm searching for this part and I can't find it. I know I entered it into my system. Well. Remember, try to stick to one way, one method of naming these parts. In some cases, I've seen some customers just type AB for Alan Bradley and call it a day. But it all depends on how specific you absolutely need to be. You can also come in and add it to a specific library. In this case here, I'm going to add it to my user field. Is this a base part or an auxiliary or an accessory? The three main ones that I see now, what does this mean? What is a base part versus an auxiliary? Well, if you think about your, if you're working with something like a contactor, you have the, the main part of the contactor, but then in some cases you may need to add that auxiliary block to the outside of that. Well, that's where base and auxiliary or accessory. A fuse is a great example. The fuse is the base part because that's what's actually in your circuit but you need the fuse holder so that's the accessory to that fuse so you can add that into your manufacturer part uh, into your component and start adding those to your project later on but again so this is where you would start to organize those parts which in the end again garbage in garbage out in the end this is where all these little parts and pieces are going to go into your bill of materials at the very end so once you have the basic information in here, always give it a good description. If you only if you only get it from one supplier, DigiKey, Mauser, whoever it is, RS Components, right? Uh, McMaster, whoever it is, put it in there. At least you have that reference. Sometimes, you know, back in the day when I was doing a lot of design work, I had multiple suppliers that I would always check to see which one I could get the best price. But in this case here, you have one field that you you can add one supplier and their stock number as well. You also have the ability to define a specific line diagram, schematic symbol, 3D model, which we'll get into much later in this video series, your 2D footprint, connection label, a printed circuit board file, your terminal type and terminal strip symbol. 
into this particular manufacturer part. Now you're not adding it to the part, you're simply pointing to that symbol when you utilize this. So if you create a new component in your project and you want this manufacturer part that we're working with right now to be associated to that new component, when I go to insert that component into my schematic, it's going to use whatever I have in this particular field. So when I select this, it's just going to open up my symbol selector. And now every time I use this manufacturer part, it's going to look and find this symbol and make me use that symbol. I can always change that if I need to, but this just helps me get my job done faster. Again, based on the 2D footprints, if I have one, I definitely want to include my width, my height, and my depth. If you have a use uh, or control voltage and frequency, add those in as necessary. And then it leads us to our circuits and our terminals. So in this case here, I don't have any circuits and I don't have any terminals yet. As soon as I add my first circuit, it's automatically going to add a terminal. I can have as many circuits as I want. And I also can have as many terminals under one circuit as I want. So in this case here, I have multiple circuits with multiple terminals. I can also go ahead and define what type of circuit that is. In this case here, I'm just going to call it terminal, but in reality, maybe it is a normally open power contact or a, an alarm signal, or maybe it's an auxiliary mail pin that I want to call out for this. In most cases, if you don't know or don't want to go to extreme detail with this, if you don't have to, I recommend just utilizing the terminal type. Um, it's essentially the default or the, or the generic term for each one of these. I can also define a group. So maybe these are the power group or the pin group as well for this. I can also add a mark. So maybe in this case here, this particular part that I'm working with is, this is how it's set up. Or if you're ever working with a contactor, you have 13, 14, and you have uh, 21, 31. So there's some, this is where you would enter that particular information in about that particular terminal. You also have the ability to assign the max number of wires that are allowed to go into that particular terminal. In some cases, you're allowed to, for lack of a better term, shove more than one wire into that terminal slot. But if I have more than one wire going to that terminal, I can generate a report, also known as a design rule check, that gives me a warning, lets me know, hey, I have two or three or five wires going to this one terminal in this part. And you told me that this is only allowing me to have one. So here's a warning letting you know that you might have to fix this. I also have mnemonic. Maybe there's specific information about this particular terminal that I need to also carry over. Maybe every time I use this, maybe it's ground. So I always want to use pin one or pin, in this case, 13 as a ground line. I also can define the max gauge and the minimum gauge for this. If I'm working in, as you can see here, as I expand these out a little bit more, if I'm working with IEC, I may want to include millimeter squared rather than gauge. In my case here, most of the stuff I work with is with AUG or Imperial, so I pretty much try to hide those as I go forward. But you can also go ahead and define all of these at the same time. That's the maximum, and maybe the, the minimum is 20 gauge. I also have the ability to define the wire termination type. And if you notice the very top of the screen under the library tab, it was another library. It's called the wire termination types. And that's where we can look at our wire ferrules or different types of terminations. I can define the wire terminations for every single terminal for this particular connector. So in the case of this, if this was a contactor, maybe I'm required to use wire ferrules every single time. There are companies that require this. There's countries that make this. This is a mandate in their country that you will put a wire ferrule or a pin on every single wire and end termination before you put it into the component. It's just something that they require. So 
maybe it makes sense to add that in as well, which now allows you to utilize this wire termination types manager as well. Once you've got all the information in here and everything's ready to go, that's when you can go ahead and select OK and save this part off. When you save this part, I'll go ahead and make one. And now I have this new part in my database so I can reuse this over and over and over again. If I ever need to find that part that I just created, I can use my filters. I can find the specific manufacturer. In my case here, I called it JEE1. And I can find that particular part. And now I can edit that information as well. New in 2021 is a really nice little feature where I can exclude from the bill materials. So if there's something that I need to include in my schematic and define it as a component for now, I can set this option here that every time I use this part, it's going to be excluded from the uh, bill materials. Not many people use that, but there's a reason why it's there because somebody asked for it and so uh, they added it in. So I hope this helped uh, give you a better understanding of manufacturer parts. There's a lot more you can do with this. Of course, I said you can customize this, but we'll get into customizing way later in these modules. Again, that's something that you also cover during training, the official training through your value added reseller as well. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.